Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And today I have for you another book review. This is another one by Jean Ritchie on the dulcimer. Better pay, it's easier on this one to see what it is. You know, in our other book review, I don't know where it is. She had a whole stack of them and people got really confused and thought it was like one mega musical instrument. But no, it was just this little one. This is one of the shapes the dulcimer comes in. You can see she's playing a very traditional way here with a noter and she's using probably a turkey feather as her pick. This is the way a lot of people played it. I, I wouldn't sit it exactly on my lap like that, but that's really an awkward position she's in that might've just been for the photo. Let's look and see what it says. It says a clear basic instruction method on how to tune and play the dulcimer with 16 traditional songs and lyrics, plus tuning instructions for six modes. Remember I was on that journey trying to figure out modes and apparently <laughs> in the beginning of dulcimer playing, it was discussed much more often. People didn't play as much in the major tuning with DAD. Um, at this time it was still greatly variable. And so she tells you how to tune for six different modes, chapters on playing counter metal counter melody, finger picking, and singing with the dulcimer, and much more, complete with historical notes and rare photographs. Very odd thing to note is they have a hyphenated word on the cover of a book. Weird, right? Um, this is probably a reprint, but it does have, it's published by Hal Leonard, and it has some of the other old timey <laughs> dulcimer books on the back, In Search of the Wild Dulcimer, which is by Robert Force and Albert de Oche. Merrily Strum Mountain Dulcimer for Children by Mary Catherine McSpadden, which I find that one interesting because remember my new dulcimer is called a McSpadden dulcimer. So I'm wondering if there isn't a connection there. Stay tuned. Then they have the Appalachian Dulcimer book by Michael Murphy. Four and 20 Songs for the Mountain Dulcimer by Lynn McSpadden. Hmm. With music transcribed by Dorothy French. And then pictures, poems, and other dulcimer pieces by Kevin Roth. And these all are currently done by Hal Leonard. That is a modern publisher. So I'm thinking that these are probably all reprints. So I'm kind of holding that up there for you so you can get a little gist of that. Um, and you may know by this time I will have participated, I think. Let me check my calendar here. Yes, I will have participated in... Quarantine. It's a virtual dulcimer fest. Um, and so Quarantine 9 will be held in early February, but there's next one, Quarantine 10, I think is in June, I believe. So there's still time to get in on that one. So lots of great teachers from across the country. You can sign up. There's beginning, middle, advanced topics. They have built if you go to the website, you'll understand it all. There's all different levels and a variety of classes, both for traditional dulcimer. You just have to look at the titles. And somebody said to me, you know, even though I play traditionally, I've learned something from each class that I took. So I actually signed up. Do I have the note here? No, maybe not. I signed up for one that's going to teach you how to change strings and take care of your dulcimer. Um, one on traditional playing with the noter. So yay, also on that one. Um, oh, and the other one is on how to utilize that one and a half fret that you know I got on my new mix padded dulcimer. So I'm excited for all those classes. They also have classes for the hammered dulcimer and then for a variety, we'll say a variety of folk instruments, including the ukulele. Um, and then there's going to be a series of concerts. It's a way to support music, well, musicians as well as you know, like concert musicians, as well as those who teach normally because traveling around and doing workshops just hasn't been possible to the same degree since the pandemic. And this helps them, you know, to eat, <laughs> be quite frank. So this is clearly a reprint. It's just interesting that it has this really old timey, it looks almost like a woodcut or a lithograph. And what's on the inside under the dulcimer book by Jean Ritchie is a little bit different. It says being a book about three stringed Appalachian dulcimer, including some ways of tuning and playing some recollections in its local history in Perry and not counties, Kentucky, some observations on the probable origins of the instrument in the old countries of Europe with plentiful photographic illustrations and drawings and with words and music for some 16 songs from the Ritchie family of Kentucky. So slightly different description in there. 
The music was transcribed by Jerry Silverman. The editorial production was by Ethel Rehm. Song illustrations selected by and from the collection of Moses Ash. And this was originally published in 1974 by Oak Publications. And it was dedicated to Gene Ritchie's father. Just thought that was important to, to show the man who taught her to, well, he didn't teach her to play. She learned to play behind the couch. That's a different story. Um, I think I talk about that in the other book review I did. I did one on the dulcimer people. There is right away an alphabetical index of songs, including which mode they are in, and then a table of contents. So some people are just going to want the songs. And so here they give you the songs. Isn't this interesting? Um, major mode, or sorry, this one's minor, which is called Aeolian, but she's letting you know it also sounds pretty good in Dorian. Isn't this interesting? So minor you see is Aeolian. Major is also called Ionian. We've lost those words over time. People don't usually use them, but look, it tells you all the other tunings. Or maybe <laughs> you can switch them around. Very interesting. The table of contents. Again, this looks like it was made on a typewriter, right? Pretty interesting here too. So it doesn't have our dot, dot, dots. It's not super clear. You're going to want a piece of paper or a ruler or something to hold up, maybe to sit there. It's a pretty small book though. So you could probably just put a post-it note. Oh, sorry, a sticky note. Post-its should really sponsor me. I'm just saying. Sticky notes. So you should put a sticky note in here somewhere um, if there's something you want to look at. Because you may not read the history as often or like the section on part three is why play the dulcimer. You're probably not going to read that any every time. You're probably going to have like a favorite song and maybe some of the tuning things you may want to mark to come back to. Now, when I say this looks like it was done on a typewriter, this is, this is what we're talking. This is like old timey, sorry, this is like old timey book here, right? Um, so even when there's text, it is two columns. Lots, uh, lots and lots of pictures from the archives. Sorry, let me turn that back around. So part one is on the three string in mountain dulcimer as I remember and know it in and around Viper, Kentucky. You'll notice that mine has four, but what they've done is double the melody string. So when they say a three stringed mountain dulcimer, it may not literally have three strings. It means normally there's a drone that is one note a drone that's another note, and then melody string. So two different drone notes or strings, and then whatever the melody is, it's one together. No matter how many strings there are for melody, mine has two melody strings. They are tuned the same. Just saying, they're tuned the same. So then under that part that has both the craftsman and the player, so the people who built them and the people who played them. Part two is the history of the Appalachian or mountain dulcimer. It's probable relationship to other stringed instruments, the sheet hold, the Norwegian lanolic, the epignette de Volzege, the Hummel, and a conclusion. And remember that is also in the dulcimer people book. Part three is why play the dulcimer. Part four is how to tune and play the dulcimer. And it starts with like how to sit and hold the instrument. Okay. Like it goes basic. Um, and that's going to go all the way through um, finger paint, pickings and all the tunings. Um, and then part five is the 16 songs from Gene Ritchie's family collection that you can play and sing along. And it's funny because some of them are multiple pages, like go tell Aunt Rhody, it says, look at 18, 20, 21, 22, and 26. That's very interesting. So let's skip over there and see what that looks like. Cause people are probably like, what on earth does that mean? So here is uh, a lot of people play Go Tell Aunt Rhody. I think it was a fiddle teaching tune. You know that tune? Oh, go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody her old gray goose is dead. And I think we also said it was on 20. Ha, but see how it had a one here. So you know it's the first version. And it said to tune the dulcimer. See, that's what's kind of unique in this book. It tells you how to tune the different strings here. See, right there. And then let's see, it's over here again. Go tail Aunt Rhody. And this is when it's talking about using a feather pick. And here is number two. And look, it's got strumming notes. See, it's telling you how to do the strumming part. Um, over here it is. And I think it's still the same tuning, but this is version three. 
And see, now it's got the numbered system going, right? Yeah. Over here, the numbers were above. And this is a system where it puts it right with, with it. Let's see. I think there were some more places. Yep, here's another one. The fourth one, it still has Gotelliant Rody. And it's telling you more about strumming and all. But look, it's got Dulcimer Tab. So you could read it this way. And those are... Can you see that? Sorry, that's a little hard to read. Those are also numbers. They've now finally, there are some computer programs that will print in Dulcimer tab, but it's hard to get a hold of them. Is there another one? Yep. So Go Tell Aunt Rhodey is finally then listed properly in part five of the book, which is the 16 songs. And it has the other four verses as well. Um, so it tells you how to tune it again. And then look, it's got the numbers above, but you've already had lessons on how to play this with different um, rhythms, different ways of writing it. What are the songs? Go Tell Aunt Rhodey, Barbary Ellen, which has quite a few verses. The verses aren't numbered. Um, it's a little awkward on this one because I think you go down a column and then down another column. I'm not sure. Or do you go across? I think you would go down and then down. Um, so lots of verses. A lot of folk songs had many, many verses. Well, they were uh, oftentimes dancing songs. Um, and sometimes you would get silly and you could make up your own verses as well. Or not so silly and make up your own verses. The next one is Going to Boston and then Bachelor's Hall. Pretty Sorrow. Going Downtown. Over the River Charlie. What'll I Do with the Baby O? Pretty Betty Martin. Shady Grove. Old Betty Larkin. Oh, Johnny's on the Water. Groundhog. Groundhog's getting a little complicated. Ooh, fancy notes in there, right? It's got some 16th notes in that one. Most of them are, are simpler than that. But then you want to get some fancier notes. Pretty Polly has a little bit of syncopation. Old Joe Clark is the one I was talking about where you get silly and can make up your own verses. Um, Old Joe Clark has so many verses. And even that tune has so many other songs. that are just silly set to it. Um, they're just fun. There's one called Dear Companion. And then they actually give you an accompaniment. So here's the main tune. Here's a suggested accompaniment that goes on to the next page. And then in the very back is a little biography on Gene Ritchie. Then they have that discography. Remember we had that before, whether or not they were still available. These are recordings that did exist. And so we may be able to find them um, still on the internet, but it does say here for Gene Ritchie, all Gene Ritchie's available recordings may be ordered from Folklife Productions. And that was in Port Washington, New York. I wonder if that still exists. And then there is a bibliography. And then there's a list of um, things by Gene Ritchie, both books and records. Let's look that up quick. Folklife Productions is what it said. Let's see here. Oops. My goodness, friends, I've... Windows open for filming other episodes. Let's see here. Folk Life Productions. And I'll even type in Port Washington, New York. See what happens. Oh my goodness. It might still exist. Well, that's surprising. <laughs> there's no reviews but it's it still exists it gives their phone number here as 516-767-0757 wonder if there's there's no reviews or anything it's just listed oh i wish there was a website but i'm not seeing a website but it's kind of funny that there's still a phone number existing There's a group on for it, so maybe it does still exist. Ha. Yep. It's listing people as working there. So, I mean, I guess it exists. Interesting. I don't know. We might have to call and find out if they still exist and if you can still get some of these recordings. Um, I know there's a number of videos of her that you can find on YouTube as well as um, perhaps some other archives. So this book, 
I think a decent amount of it is repeated in, in the Big Dulcimer People book, which is a much thicker book. But this is a great little beginner book as well. Either one is a great beginner book, I think. Um, put down in the comments below if you want to see anything else. Of course, I'm not going to just hold up the music for five minutes so you can play it. But, you know, a reasonable request. I will try and get back to you. And again, this is now published by Hal Leonard. But a lot of places won't carry it because they have to order a huge pallet of the books. That's what the music shop owners have said to me. <laughs> but you can find it at online retailers is the place to go because they can handle that sort of um, thing. And you can probably order it directly from Hal Leonard themselves. Okay. Um, remember, I normally say may God bless you and keep you. But we've been working on it in Latin. So let's go ahead. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedica tibi dominus et custodia te. Ostende et hot. <laughs> dominus facium suum tibi et misere etur tui. Convertat dominus voltum suum ad te et dominus bonus det tibi patum. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.